Guys, NBA season is here, and one of the easiest ways to make a lot of money on basketball cards is being ahead of the market when it comes to predictions on what happens and how the season unfolds. So in today's video, we're going to talk through my 2023-24 NBA season predictions and hopefully give you a leg up when it comes to basketball card investing for this year. Let's dive in. Like I mentioned in the intro, one of the easiest ways to make quite a bit of money on basketball card investing is simply just figuring out what the narratives of the season are going to be before they unfold and then being a first mover to invest in that accordingly. And in this part of the video, we're going to look at five bold predictions that I have for the upcoming season. And if they unfold as I think they will, investing in them now will lead to some big payoffs later. So here are my five bold predictions. For one, we're gonna start by saying SGA is going to be top three in MVP voting. That's not too big of a stretch, because last year he finished number five, and to be fair, there was a big gap between him and number four, but he did finish number five and the Thunder were not very good. This year, I think the Thunder are going to be more competitive, and for an MVP finalist, one of the things that I think is a pretty large qualification is just being on a good team, good enough to host a home playoff series in the first round of the playoffs, and I do think the Thunder could do that. I think there's a world where they finish in the top four. I don't think they're going to be elite, and I've heard some people taking them to the Western Conference Finals. Maybe that happens. I still think they're a year or two away, but they are very good, and SGA is a top 10 player in the league. That and the Thunder's growth could really bode well for some MVP votes for this young guy. Number two, the old heads still dominate. In this, I'm particularly referring to Steph, LeBron, and KD. And I'm not saying those guys are going to go one, two, and three in MVP voting. But what I do mean is that at the end of the game, when rubber meets road and you have one guy that's going to win the game for you, you want one of those three on your team with the ball in their hand. There's a lot of young talent, but the old heads still dominate playing against kids that are literally half their age. Real fast, before I get too crazy with any more bold predictions, I have a quick favor to ask. I've been paying more attention to our YouTube channel analytics lately, and it appears that most of you guys watching this video right now don't actually subscribe to the channel. So if you could do me a big favor and just click the thumbs up hit the subscribe button and then ring the notification bell so you never miss another one of our videos that would help us so much as we continue to try to make these awesome videos for you guys and there might be something in it for you too we're actually picking a lucky subscriber every friday and sending him a box of cards so you never know you might get something out of it Next up, I think it's a year of international dominance. I'm going to call it that the top five MVP vote getters are all foreign. It's going to be Embiid, Jokic, SGA, Giannis, and Luka. The Americans that get the most votes, I think, is going to be Jason Tatum and Devin Booker, but that remains to be seen. Either way, basketball has definitely become a global phenomenon, and nothing proves it more than how many great foreign players we have in our league. Number four, I think the Lakers are a top three team. Nobody played the Nuggets much better than the Lakers, and I know they got swept every game, but they at least made every game interesting, and in the playoffs, nobody else could really say that. They made some great moves in the offseason, gave Vincent look great on the Heat last year, and if he looks anything like that for the Lakers this year, that could really help them, and he could displace D'Lo in the starting lineup. Finally, this is going to be the year of Wimby. I've seen some hot takes saying he's going to be contending for MVP, and I don't think that's the case. I think the Spurs are going to be very methodical in his development. But either way, when he's on TV, he's going to be must-watch TV. It's honestly hard to take your eyes off him. He's just like a crazy 2K My Player figure that moves unlike anything we've ever seen. So I can't wait to watch a lot of Wimby this year. And he seems like such a good guy that I want him to succeed. It seems like the league wants him to succeed. This is bigger than just a star young talent. This is like potentially the face of the league for two decades. Next up, let's talk about some predicted award winners. If you can invest in the future MVP or Rookie of the Year before they actually win the hardware, you're going to see some big gains throughout the course of the season. So here's my picks for who finishes top in those awards. For MVP, I'm going to go ahead and say that I think Giannis wins it this year. Jokic is a logical pick because he's been the best player in basketball for three years straight. But this year, Giannis is going to be hungry. He has Dame by his side. So I don't think his points per game scoring is going to go up, but I do think he's going to dish out a lot more assists. And losing Drew Holiday is going to mean that he's asked to do a lot more on the defensive end. So I think all around his stats improve and he snags an MVP. For a long shot, SGA is a good one. He's plus 1,800 right now on FanDuel. So if you're just looking for a long shot bet to win MVP, SGA seems like decent bang for your buck. It's probably not going to happen, but if it did, big payout. Rookie of the year, Wimby should win it if he stays healthy all of the season. Like I said, he has just been so dominant in what we've seen early in preseason that it's hard to imagine he doesn't win it. Chet is about the only one that seems like he could contend, but for my insane long shot, Derek Lively has plus 8,000 odds on FanDuel. I think he could be good this year, and I think Luka needs a lot of help, 
particularly help that doesn't believe that the world is flat. And then finally, my finals pick is going to be the Bucks. Like I said, a very hungry Giannis might be enough to topple Denver, but Denver's my runner-up pick, and last year they kind of just steamrolled everybody en route to the finals, so it might be silly to bet against them, but this year something tells me Giannis is going to come out hungrier than ever and take the Bucks all the way. And finally, let's talk about the best boxes to buy. Whether you're looking to rip these cards or hold them for future resell, here's my picks for low, mid, and high-end cards. The low end, we're going to go with Donruss. The paper-rated rookies are a classic, and you get a lot of cards for a pretty affordable price. And pro tip, if you're opening some cards with a young collector, this is a great set to dive into. They look great, they can be valuable if you get something colored, and of course they're just a lot of fun to open. My mid-tier pick is Prism. Prism might not be everybody's cup of tea, but somehow it has become the choice mid-tier product, and maybe even the choice basketball product. This is, after all, the product that everybody was fighting for during the pandemic, and when I say fighting, I mean quite literally. These boxes are also cool because you get 12 packs of 12 cards, so you get a lot more opportunities of pulling a nice lottery ticket kind of card than if you just buy one of those 6 to 12 card boxes that are also in the mid-tier price point and that has made Prism a favorite. Here's my personal favorite basketball brand, and it's a great mid-tier product as well. It's Donruss Optic. It's basically just the chromium version of Donruss Card, so it's kind of how Tops and Tops Chrome coexisted as these paper and chromium version of cards for a while. Now Donruss and Donruss Optic are Panini's version uh, for as long as Panini has basketball cards. If you decide to rip a box of Optic, you're looking at 20 packs of four cards. You get a lot of parallels in the box. There's a lot of good color in Optic cards. You also get one rookie autograph, and typically they're on card, which is really nice, because Prism's usually just a sticker. So I like that over Prism. And also, most importantly, these boxes cost about half of what a Prism box costs. So for a good long-term investment, I think these are going to be a popular product. And if you're looking at buying some Prism Silvers of your favorite rookie, also consider some Optic Hollows because they're going to have a lot smaller population moving forward. And finally, my high-end pick is National Treasures. So if you happen to be lucky enough to have $3,000 of disposable income sitting around and you just itch to rip something, National Treasures is the high-end brand to chase. There's Flawless as well, but Flawless typically releases between six dollars to $10,000, and National Treasures is going to clock in at about half of that, but the National Treasures RPAs number to 99 are probably the single biggest chase rookie autographs that are not one of ones that release every year. If you hit one of those of the top Top rookies, it's going to be worth a lot of money. That said, it really seems like Wimbenyama and Scoot Henderson are not going to be signing for Panini, so take all of these Panini recommendations with a grain of salt. It's going to be interesting to see what Tops, Bowman, and Fanatics do with NBA players throughout the course of this season. We might have to post an update video, at least when it comes to the brands to invest in. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it helps you make a lot of money over the course of the NBA season. Be sure to watch some other videos right here. Wait, right, right here, right up, right over here.